Yeah. Please welcome to this video tutorial. This is a quick view on what we see or time to reward crash recovery as a topic. Okay. However, um, we're going to see from the outlines, our outlines, what and what and what we are going to look through or go through in this uh, topic. It is good to have you. It's good to see you uh, watching this video. Um, I want to quickly urge that you subscribe to the channel and share so that you can be getting updates in subsequent videos. Right, let's move ahead by um, presenter. Uh, you see the name right below the slide. Okay, so crash recovery. What is it all about? You will see um, the next slide. It's going to tell us a form of introduction. We're talking about when tra transactions being carried out by the present system or by the system can experience, you know, interruption unexpectedly. And so that can lead to about what? Crash of a database. So maybe like in this, uh, uh, the Nigerian environment or mostly Africa, you see oftentimes power interruption, you know, having a problem, you know, in and out. Somehow, maybe in, like in a country like Nigeria, it's already kind of a part of the system. It doesn't make any difference, you know, but then it's not the right thing. It's not the right norm, you know. Okay. Now back to our, what exactly we're talking about, transactions. Somebody will say, what's about transactions? Transactions is simple, talking about what? Good. Not physics. To start with. Not financial accounting, not economics. Not maybe um, no commerce. No, you are using the term in relation to what? To database. Okay. And so if the system happened to experience any failure in the course of working, that can lead to about what? Crash of the database. And thus, it will leave whatever has been, what has been going on, you know, in an unstable state, which you're going to see soon, and then inconsistent. Okay, quickly, by definition, we say it's a process in which the, um, the, the database is rolled back to a consistent and usable what? State. So crash recovery. If there's ex a system experience or database experience a crash, of course, when the system restarts, or maybe when the supply comes back or any other situation, of course, the system will want to check back from where it all started from, down to at the point where you were before the system experienced the crash. This is on that, right? Now, in the diagram below, you see three kind of conical shapes. The middle one containing both the transactions that been carried out and everything been complete and they have been committed. In other words, you finish everything and they have been taken to the rightful position in the system, the database. Then on the right side, those that have been complete and have been taken to the rightful position with that and can be used another time. Meanwhile, the middle one contains both the ones that have been complete and the ones that have not been eh, complete. While on the left hand side, he's talking about those that are, are yet to be taken to the rightful position or the transaction that have not been complete. That if there's a recovery, there will be need for you to look back into those ones. That is the indication of the triangle, and of course the rectangular one are those transactions that have been completed and committed. You know, you wonder what is about committed? That you finish the job, and the, the job, the tax have been taken to the rightful position in the database, such that there's nothing will happen to it, even if there's a crash here taking place. All right. Now the next one is. Um, types and causes of failures. You know, we're talking about types and causes of failures. There can be failures in different ways to the database. One is a transaction failure, system crash, and of course, disk failure. What about transaction failure? It can be caused by two things, system logical errors and system errors. What about logical errors? Um, some of you talked about programming, maybe QBasic in advanced level, we talk about um, Visual Basic and the rest of them. Now, codes has to do with code syntax. Now, if there's a wrong execution of syntax of the codes, of course, it can, lead, it can lead to what transaction failure. Then system errors. The system error referring to the, the system, the database software itself. You will experience something in maybe Corel Draw, Microsoft Word for those, you know, um, um, most common application being used, that if you're doing something to get to a point, and what will you experience? You want to save, you want to close, you, nothing is happening, you click this one, it's not responding, you want to go back, nothing. 
in fact, you can get frustrated and get pissed up. You know, this is about what? A state of crash. You know, a system can crash. The database application itself can crash such that there will be need for restart and then recovery. All right? Then the second one, system crash. What about system crash? The aspect of um, power interruption is a major cause for this. System crash can take place in two forms. Um, you can talk about maybe hardware or software. What about the hardware? Maybe your motherboard, maybe the um, CPU or any of it can get damaged because of what? Unintermittent um, power um, interruption. On the other side of it, the software, the system, operating system itself can you know, get crashed in the case of all this. All right, then, then the disk failure. And the disk failure is all about what? Talk about maybe your hard disks, maybe you talk about um, what? You talk about uh, any other disks, you can mix of external or internal. Now you're making use of it for DBMS. And then maybe at a point you want to uh, access, you discover you cannot access a particular um, transaction or whatever you're doing, you know? And what you'll be wondering what must have caused this? They can happen to be a bad sector, or they can happen to be what? And a, a corruption in what? Uh, in the what? The right ahead, you know, part of the DIGS, so they cannot allow you to access any data or transaction. So this can lead to what? DIGS failure. And so these are the types of um, failures and of course the causes of the failures. All right, let's, uh, let's push ahead, right ahead logging. What's about right ahead logging? In right ahead logging, we see um, what? Wow, very important. And we say it's a, it's a family of techniques incorporated together. So it's, like, it's very robust. And it's one of the major, you know, um, you know, techniques used for crash recovery. And what's it all about? It does what? Its major function, you see? It ensures, one, that every transaction that's going on is taken or registered in the log of the system. Just like you talk about um, maybe student register, you talk about um, staff attendance, you know? These things are rec recorded so that with time, we can possibly make use of it or make reference to it sometime, um, you know, in future, okay? And then, okay, let's push ahead. Then secondly, it will also not just stop in there. It will ensure that these records, which are taken to where? Taken to the log, are also written to the what we call stable storage, and finally to the disks, so that I can make reference to it in terms of uh, recovery. All right, so in doing this, Two important things are ensured, which is principle of what? The recovery manager. What is that? It guarantees atomicity and their uh, durability. Atomicity and their uh, durability. We are going to discuss this in, as we move ahead. But one of the clear ex examples of this uh, wall techniques is what? ARIS. Very important. You remember from our outline, you saw something like that. From our outline, you saw something like that. Okay, so let's push ahead. I hope someone is with me. Quickly, recovery manager. What's about recovery manager? In firms, in organizations, in schools, parasatals, there must be somebody to spare head. They're running the affairs of the firm to see to it that things are working fine. Now, the same thing here. In the whole application of database, there must be that part referred to as a recovery manager, which ensures these crash recovery processes. Uh, in, uh, in applying the principles, the four principles, ACID, A, C, I, D, principles of atomicity and durability. And so what about atomicity? The tiniest part of an atom, atom, say atom, the tiniest, the smallest part of an atom, you know, of a what? Of a particle, you know? So atomicity is referring to every tiny, no matter how small transaction, it is being taken note of. And then durability, durability, referring to what? The lasting of that particular transaction or transactions. So, you see that, that the recovery manager is to ensure that these things are followed up. Okay, so at this point, move on to something else. All right? Still on it, one of the example of WAL, you know, protocol is ARIS. 
algorithms for recovery and isolation exploiting semantics aris what's it all about we say it's designed to work with a no force steel database approach a no force steel database approach so what's it all about force no force when you say take it gently please take it gently no force there should be no force there should be no force steel you know now what's this what is this now in no force you are doing something the transaction operation is the transaction operation is taking place gradually and then this the one that have been complete that needs to be taken to the you know log it needs to be registered in the log taken to a stable storage these things are done on the ground without any interference with the what with the tax going on so this is about what no force and still database approach all right let's push ahead from this point and so arrays can be effective using three principles right ahead logging two repeating history during redo three logging changes during undo logging changes during undo quickly we we'll look at them now quickly we we'll look at them now quickly we we'll look at them now okay so what about them um, right ahead logging i made mention of this while well, we're talking about what while wow. so it's to make sure that any change to an object is first recorded in the log everything you are doing anything you are adding up that is taken to added to what to the log and then that object of course be further up, further up written to the stable storage before the changes are finally written to the disk okay when i say stable storage i'll be talking about soonest but let's pu push ahead repeating history during redo now after the crash there's going to be the restart system will restart now what is the function of this part of the principle it will trace back everything that have taken place from the beginning to the point of crash and so it's going to trace back everything and bring it and recall it to the system and it's going to divide it into two forms into two parts one we should call it data uh, dirty page table and the other one transaction table the one in the dirty page some of the transactions that you committed or you, even if they were not committed but been long you have carried them out and you are no longer working on them they'll be in a particular section and the ones that were still working on before the crash took place will be in the transaction table we're still going to say something on them with time okay after it has gotten back this thing the next thing is that it's going to undo those transactions that were still active at the time of crash it's going to undo them threw them away you know abort them they, they are not useful yes that's what's going to happen and then finally we say logging changes during undo those changes that were thrown away those changes that were thrown away that were uh, undone of course it's going to create another register for them called compensation lock record compensation lock record so all those changes will be locked there why in order to help the database management application in case there's even a crash on the course of recovery the, the recovery manager will not need to fall back from the beginning rather it will just pick